Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news at 6 on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. Congress hits out at the Modi government on several issues like Kashmir and farmers. Unrest working committee led by Sonia Gandhi meets as it seeks to unite the opposition for the presidential polls. Aam Aadmi Party government pushes for damages from a discoms as long power cuts haunt Delhi. Met assures temperatures will go below 45 soon with the monsoon rains expected to be 98% of long term average. Two farmers are killed and four others injured in a police firing during a farmer's protest in uh, Mansour in Madhya Pradesh, internet services suspended in Deva, Sindor and Ujjain. And Sher Bahadur Dioba is set to become the Prime Minister of Nepal for the fourth time. The Nepali Congress leader was the sole candidate for the PM election. Well, the main opposition party, the Congress, today hit out at the Modi government at the centre. The party is the highest decision-making body. The CWC criticised the NDA government on several issues, including the situation in Kashmir, farmers' unrest and the economic situation of the country. Congress Working Committee, the highest decision-making body of the main opposition party, met in the national capital on Tuesday to take stock of the political situation in the country. Several leaders, including the party president Sonia Gandhi and former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, criticized the NDA government on several issues, including economy and social harmony. Sabka saath, sabka vikas. Lekin uska bilk ult kiya ये सिर्फ नारों और पब्लिसिटी की सरकार है जो टेलीविजन में तो हीरो दिखती है लेकिन जमीन पे जमीनी कामों में जीरो है कांग्रेस प्रेसिडेंट इन हर ओपनिंग रिमार्क्स एट द मीट आल्सो हिट आउट एट द एनडीए गवर्नमेंट्स कश्मीर पॉलिसी सरकार ने जो पॉलिसी कश्मीर के लेकर इख्तियार की है वो कंफ्रंटेशन और एलिनेशन की पॉलिसी इख्तियार की है हमारे जवान रोज मारे जाते हैं सिविलियन मारे जाते हैं चाहे उसमें बच्चे हो नौजवान हो ये जो एलिनेशन की पॉलिसी है ये सरकार की ये गलत पॉलिसी है the issue of elections to the post of President and Vice President of India also featured in the discussion at the CWC amidst attempts by the Congress to forge opposition unity on the issue. Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. Well, join me for a chat right now is our correspondent Vishal Dahiya. Vishal, uh, what was on the agenda of the CWC meet today? Well, uh, the Congress Working Committee was uh, meeting today with a clear agenda, Frank, and the agenda was to take stock of the political situation in the country right now because the NDA government has completed three years in power and we have seen how uh, the opposition, specifically the Congress, has, uh, uh, you know, uh, taken uh, up uh, the cudgels against uh, the uh, government uh, uh, by doing press conferences at several places. Uh, and uh, the senior leaders were uh, put into the ground uh, by the Congress's top leadership to take on the government. This particular uh, working committee was more or less, uh, uh, you know, uh, to take uh, uh, stock of the situation, to uh, go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, give a message to uh, the party cadres uh, and uh, the party's uh, other leadership and the workers, as well as the other opposition parties. Uh, in fact, uh, the Congress has been trying to uh, forge opposition unity uh, on uh, the issue of uh, presidential and vice presidential elections. Uh, and uh, this particular CWC was sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, an instrument to go ahead and uh, put a message across to the other opposition parties that Congress is a united house and uh, uh, what Congress believes and thinks uh, uh, as far as the NDSC is of power is concerned, that message should be uh, sent across. And uh, that's what that was uh, pretty much evident uh, in uh, the uh, addresses which were made by the Congress president, the Congress uh, 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 the other other Congress leaders, and specifically uh, the former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, they did criticize uh, 
uh, the NDA government on several uh, aspects, be it the economy, the DSU of demonetization, the social harmony. Uh, apart from this, uh, well, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of speculation, uh, specifically after the last CWC, which met in November 2016, wherein uh, uh, there was uh, uh, a concerted demand for uh, Rahul Gandhi to take over as the president. So everybody was hoping that that issue will be, uh, AC will be taken up uh, further in this particular CWC meeting and we might hear something. But then uh, nothing of that sort was on the agenda. In fact, uh, the organizational elections was on the agenda and uh, as per uh, uh, the the entire program, which has been ratified by the CWC, the organizational elections of the Congress party should come to an end by October 15 with uh, the election of the new Congress president and the Congress vice president. So really no word on when Rahul Gandhi will take over, but uh, the, uh, the organizational elections will be over by October to uh, this year. And uh, everybody is hoping that that will be the time when uh, the uh, young leader will finally take over. As of now, the Congress seems to be in uh, uh, a very uh, strong opposition mood and uh, taking on the NDA government on aspects where it believes it can go ahead and put the uh, ruling party on a slippery slope. You know, the ruling party has come under a lot of criticism as far as its uh, Kashmir policy is con concerned. That was uh, something that was highlighted yet again by Gulam Nabi Azad, uh, 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 you know, uh, and he too, after the CWC came out and spoke, as we saw in the report, that the policy of, on Kashmir, as far as the NDA government is concerned, is not at all working, is something that he came out and said. Well, yes, uh, indeed, uh, that is uh, another uh, point uh, which the Congress has been... Uh, uh, you know, highlighting for quite some time uh, the NDA government's policy with uh, Jammu and Kashmir and, uh, and the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the situation which has been prevailing in uh, uh, the northern state is something which is a cause of concern for uh, uh, not only the government, uh, uh, but the opposition as well. That's what the Congress party seems to be conveying here. And uh, the, uh, the, the leader of opposition in uh, the upper house uh, and uh, senior Congress leader Gulam Nabi Azad has pointed out uh, time and again uh, in uh, the upper house also on earlier occasions as well and today also in uh, that uh, cwc meeting it was the congress president who pointed out uh, uh, initially that uh, the government's uh, jammu and kashmir policy is confrontationist in nature which is leading to a lot of loss of lives as far as the uh, indian armed forces are concerned and this is something which cannot yield good results uh, uh, and that's exactly our the point which was uh, once again uh, echoed by other leaders uh, uh, such as uh, Gulam Nabi Azad, who is also the ex-chief minister of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. And right. uh, the party has also constituted a group under the leadership of uh, uh, former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh uh, to keep a tab on uh, issues specifically related to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. All right, Vishal Daya, yeah, we'll have to leave to that. Thank you so much for joining us there with all those details. Moving on, now Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Minister Raji Pratap Rudi asserted on Tuesday that the entry-level demand for skilled workforce is huge in services and industrial manufacturing. He also stressed that the government has trained more than 1.17 crore people under various skill development programs. Rudi also said that states and private firms are being roped in to bolster skill development programs. Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana ke liye cabinet ne... 12,000 करोड़ रुपए की स्वीकृति दी है। इसे तीन वर्ष में पूरा करना है, एक करोड़ का लक्ष्य है, और उसे राज्य सरकारों के साथ मिलके भी करना है। इसलिए प्रधानमंत्री कौशल विकास योजना का 25 प्रतिशत राशि सीधे राज्य सरकारों को भी दिया जा रहा है, ताकि उसके लिए इकोसिस्टम में प्रधानमंत्री कौशल विकास 100% grant के रूप में प्रधानमंत्री कौशल विकास योजना के लिए लगभग 550 करोड़ विभिन्न राज्यों को रिलीज किया है ताकि well, at least two farmers were killed and four others injured in police firing during a farmers protest in Mansour in Madhya Pradesh following the violence curfew has been imposed in the area internet services uh, also have been suspended in three cities Indore Devas and Ujjain however state home minister Bhupendra Singh denies the state police's involvement in the firing Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan has ordered a judicial inquiry into the incident. Farmers in the region have been protesting since June 1st, demanding higher prices for their produce and loan waiver. The agitation by farmers has led to a shortage of milk and vegetables in the state. Lagatar nirdesh the police ko. कि कहीं पर भी अगर किसानों की कोई बात है या किसान कोई बात कर रहे हैं तो पुलिस की तरफ से सख्ती नहीं होना चाहिए 
उसकी आड़ में असामाजिक तत्व तो लगातार पुलिस पर हमला कर रहे हैं अभी भी पुलिस के द्वारा कोई फायरिंग नहीं की गई है जो घटना हुई है उसकी डिटेल हमने बुलाई किसने पुलिस वाले भी पत्थर फेंक रहे थे किसान भाई भी उनको पत्थर फेंक रहे थे दोनों तरफ से पथरा हो रहा था और तभी उन्होंने गोली चला दी तो बबलू पाटीदार को गोली लगी थी पहले टोटल पांच आदमियों को गोली लगी पत्थर तो और बहुत सारों को लगे हैं लेकिन गोली पांच को लगी Well, doctors from across the country took part in a rally on in Delhi on Tuesday to demand a stringent central law to curb increasing cases of violence against them by kin of patients. Around 10,000 doctors gathered at Rajghat with 100 ambulances after marching from 13 locations in the city. Here's a report. The Indian Medical Association on Tuesday held a protest march in Delhi against atrocities faced by the medical fraternity including increasing cases of violence against doctors. The association organized Delhi Chalo movement which saw the participation of over 10000 doctors from various parts of the country. Unki man ke andar mein medical ke andar mein jo violence ho raha hai jo डर बैठा हुआ है जो फ्री माइंड नहीं है हमारे सिंगल विंडो रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं है सिंगल विंडो अकाउंटेबिलिटी नहीं है प्रोफेशनल ऑटोनॉमी नहीं है हमें काम करने दो फ्री माइंड से ये हमारा बेसिक मुद्दा है इसके लिए हमसे बैठे और बातचीत करें The protest aims to address various demands of the medical fraternity such as capping of compensation, single window accountability with no criminal charges on doctors without intent to harm a patient and single window registration of doctors and medical establishments. हमारी डिमांड है कि यह स्वच्छ स्वास्थ्य सेवा हिंदुस्तान को मिलनी चाहिए स्वास्थ्य सेवा का शोषण नहीं होना चाहिए ये जो शोषण हो रहा है ये जो सिस्टम चल रहा है ये एंटी पब्लिक एंटी पेशेंट्स है एंटी डॉक्टर्स है ये डॉक्टर्स पेशेंट्स का रिलेशनशिप खराब कर रहा है संगठित है आज हम और है हमारे हौसले बुलंद अब नहीं है हम डॉक्टरों में कोई भी अंतर हर सदस्य की मांगों का अपने मेमोरेंडम में करके समावेश अपने अधिकारों की रक्षा ही है अब हमारा उद्देश्य द प्रोटेस्ट हाउ एवर डिड नॉट अफेक्ट सर्विस इन गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल इन द कैपिटल मोहम्मद फतेह टीपूज रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी camera action Bengali filmmaker Satyajit Ray one of the veterans of the 20th century cinema credited with having directed 37 films which includes feature films and documentaries he is also a renowned fiction writer publisher illustrator graphic designer and a film critic Numerous awards were bestowed on Ray throughout his lifetime including 32 national film awards and a number of awards at international film festivals including Dada Saheb Phalke and an Academy Award for lifetime achievement. Agar bilateral cricket ties na mumkin hai to multilateral events khelne ka kya matlab hai? Aatankwad और खेल साथ साथ नहीं चलता कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट एक बहुत बड़ा इशू है और जिस तरह से क्रिकेटर्स पैसे बना रहे हैं उन इश्यूज को अभी तक किसी ने डील नहीं किया है उसके ऊपर सुप्रीम कोर्ट पहले ही बैठी हुई है मेरा रिएक्ट करना मैं नहीं समझता कोई नई बात होगी देर इज एन इम्प्रेशन दट ऑल इज नॉट वेल बिटवीन यू एंड मिस्टर मनोज तिवारी गलत फहमी हुई थी वो दूर हो गई है तो ऐसा तो हो जाता है परिवार में भी हो जाता है बाहर भी हो जाता है Watch to the point with Minister of State for Youth Affairs and Sports Vijay Goel only on Rajya Sabha Television. Safdar Jang's tomb, known as the last flicker in the lamp of Mughal architecture. This was the last monumental tomb garden of the once mighty Mughals. The sandstone and marble mausoleum was built in 1754 for Mughal statesman Safdar Jang. The Nawab of Awadh and the Prime Minister of the Mughal Empire when Ahmed Shah Bahadur ascended the throne in 1748. It was planned and built like an enclosed garden tomb in line with the style of the Humayun's tomb. It is also said stone slabs from the grave of Abdul Rahim Khan-e-Khana at Nizamuddin was stolen to build this monument 
The architecture has a clear Awadhi, Rajasthani and Bengali influence. Art arisen from a multi-hued cultural canvas. <laughs> Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Misty valleys, foaming rivers. Perched atop all these is Cherapunji, also known as Sohra or Churra, which means the land of oranges. Year-round rain had once placed Cherapunji in the record books as the wettest place on earth. Today, climactic changes have pushed it out of the top wet slot. But Cherapunji continues to retain its pristine features. These perpetual clouds and the all-pervasive mists. The story we thought we knew. The story of magnificence. The story of bloody battles. Of those who ruled and those who left their footprints. The story charting the course of our past. Talking History on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. You are watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, a day after External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj rejected US President Donald Trump's claim that India signed the Paris Accord to get billions in foreign aid, Home Minister Rajnath Singh has expressed shock over America's decision to exit the deal. Singh said Donald Trump's decision to withdraw from the climate deal has shocked India and the international community at large. Expressing concern over the decision, Singh said that he was hopeful that the US will rethink its decision. The Home Minister also said that Trump's statement about the Paris deal implied that America's own concerns were paramount, which is a cause of concern for the world. Well, some respite is predicted for Delhi from the simmering heat. The Met Department has forecast rainfall today. This comes after an intense heat wave over the past couple of days. Delhi recorded 44.6 degrees Celsius on Monday. Jhansi in Uttar Pradesh reeled at 47.2 degrees Celsius. Punjab and Haryana continued to reel under blistering heat, with Amritsar being the hottest in the two states at 46 degrees Celsius. The weather in Rajasthan remained dry and temperatures fell by 1 to 2 degrees in most places. Dabok received 2 centimeters of rainfall since yesterday and Churu was the hottest at 45.5 degrees Celsius. Cloudy and windy conditions brought the temperature down in some places of Bihar. Gaya was uh, the hottest place in the state recording a maximum of 38.5 degrees Celsius. Some places in Odisha witnessed a drop in the mercury following rains even as western parts of the state continued to sizzle. Meanwhile, rainfall occurred in parts of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep, Kerala, coastal Karnataka and isolated parts of Assam, Meghalaya and Chandigarh and Chhattisgarh, I beg your pardon. Well, here's a roundup of some other news from across the country and nationwide. 
The Income Tax Department has issued fresh summons to RJD Chief Lalu Prasad's daughter Misa Bharti in connection with alleged Benami property case. She was fined uh, 10,000 rupees for not appearing before the probe agency on Tuesday. The agency has now asked the RJD MP to appear before it on June 12th. It was alleged that both Misa Bharti and her husband were involved in 1,000 crore rupees Benami land deal and tax evasion. Former Telecom Minister Dayanidhi Maran and his brother Kalanidhi Maran appeared before a CBI court in Chennai on Tuesday as accused in the illegal telephone connections case. Five others accused in the case also appeared before the court today. The on framing of charges will take place on July 28th. The Central Probe Agency had filed a charge sheet against the Maran brothers for causing a loss of 1.78 crore rupees to the Treasury. Two former Chief Ministers of Bihar, Lalu Yadav and Jagannath Mishra, appeared before a special CBI court in Patna on Tuesday in a case related to a fodder scam. The case relates to withdrawal of 47 lakh rupees illegally from Bhagalpur Treasury. The court had summoned the accused for personal appearance. A total of 45 persons were named as accused in the case. Veteran parliamentarian Ira Shezia died in Vellore on Tuesday. Age 94, was the first elected to the Lok Sabha in 1962 on a DMK ticket representing Perambalur constituency. Later, he represented Kumbakonam in the 4th and 5th Lok Sabha. In 1978, he was elected to the Rajya Sabha on a Janta Party ticket. Well, Nepali Congress President Sher Bahadur Dioba is uh, set to become uh, the Himalayan nation's Prime Minister for the fourth time after the main opposition party decided to end the obstruction to his ascension in Parliament. The election due to ele uh, elevate Dioba to Prime Minister's post is underway in the Nepalese Parliament. 70-year-old Dioba was the sole candidate to contest for the chair as the main opposition UML or any other party did not register their candidates. Dioba has the support of more than 50% of the members required for the election to the top post. As per the constitution, a candidate must secure a simple majority in parliament to get elected as the head of the government. Dioba is likely to form his core cabinet on Wednesday, which will be later expanded in a few days. Some Madeshi parties are also likely to join the coalition. Well, Saudi Arabia on Tuesday revoked the operating license of Qatar Airways and ordered the airline's offices to close within 48 hours with an increase in the regional diplomatic crisis. But the global airlines' body, IATA, has opposed the restriction on air travel to Qatar and demanded for immediate restoration of air connectivity. Saudi Arabia has also closed its border with Qatar, effectively blocking food imports and a segment of the country's exports over Doha's support for extremism. Meanwhile, oil prices spiked and then fell sharply as energy markets were uh, buffeted by news that Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Bahrain, Yemen, Libya and the United Arab Emirates had severed uh, diplomatic ties uh, with Qatar. Global benchmark Brent crude climbed 1.25% in early Asian trading before slipping back to close to 49.47 US dollars per barrel. West Texas Intermediate followed the same route, rising 1.2% in early trading before sliding to $47.40. Qatar has long been accused of funding extremist groups to which it has repeatedly and strongly denied. Let's now take a look at some more developments from across the globe in Global Buzz. The three attackers responsible for the recent attack in London have been identified. The accused included a Moroccan-Italian, a Moroccan-Libyan and a Pakistani-born parking residence in East London. Seven people were killed and 48 injured in Sunday's attack on a London bridge.
The death toll in last week's Kabul explosion rose to more than 150. The Afghan president, Ashraf Ghani, has called it a deadliest attack in the capital since 2001. Earlier, the country's intelligence agency had blamed Pakistan for the deadliest suicide attack. It also cancelled the proposed home and away cricket fixtures with Pakistan. A new chapter in the assault on the Islamic State's groups Bastion's Raqqa has been launched by the US-backed STF after advancing to the city's outskirts. With air support from the US-led coalition, the forces have entered the city from the eastern district of al Mehslab. According to the Syrian Observatory of, for Human Rights, the joint forces have seized a number of buildings after advancing to the city's eastern edge on Monday. Well, that's it on this newscast. Have a good evening.